Okay, so now we're going to get started working on our parasite. I am going to reopen the templates and show you kind of what we have, and then I'm going to sort of start to recreate them or show you the basics of how to recreate them from the mock-up stage. So this is our stage one process work, our wireframe, and it shows all of the boxes laid out at appropriate sizes. Our stage two process work is here. This is the uh, fully realized mock-up with the cropped images, everything kind of ready to go for that. So let's open up our first InDesign file, the wireframe stage, and I will show you kind of how to recreate this file. So some of this will kind of go through a little bit faster just because I'm not going to, you know, spend the same hour amount of time creating every box. But basically, there's only a couple tools you need here, and it's basically the rectangle tool and the text tool. So let me look at this document. I'm going to recreate this document here. So the way I would do that is File, New Document. Now, in the new document, there's a couple settings I want to change. The first is the intent. I want to change that to web. And the reason is it simply puts the sizes in pixels, which will help me um, get it to the right size. It'll make it a web. It will take away facing pages. A couple little things. So the first thing I want to adjust is the width, and I want to set that to 1,000 pixels. So the next thing I want to adjust is the height. Now, if I remember rightly, it was something around maybe you know, 2,000, but I can come back to this initial document and find that out and change that later. So for now, I'm just going to guess. And I'm going to put it at 2,000, and we can adjust that later. The last adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to turn the margins to zero, and that way it won't be confusing and we won't have borders coming in at different areas. So once I have that set, all I have to do is click OK. I'm going to pull this document out so we can compare. Now it looks like this one's a little shorter, so let's check the size on this. If I click this document, and I go to, um, it should be, where are you, file, document setup, I should be able to look at the size here. So I can see that the size is a little smaller at 1962. So how can I change that here to match? All I have to do is go to the same setting, click this document, go to file, document setup, and that change that to 1962. So 1000 by 1962 is the current size of the document. I'm going to click OK. So now we have a matching document size. I'm going to save it, and I'm just going to save it to the desktop for now. I'm going to call it wireframe. And once I build these, I will then build out my proper site folder. So I have wireframe here. Now once you have this, the next step is really just to start creating the boxes in the different layers and setting them where you want them to be. I can come back to this original document and click the objects and look at what size they are and then recreate them. Or I can kind of do it intuitively. So I'm going to do it intuitively at first and then I'm going to go back and adjust the sizes so that they work. So the tool I need to grab here is the rectangle tool, which is also accessed by the M on the keyboard. I'm going to click that. Uh, I'm going to change the stroke to a fill by switching this here because I don't want a stroke on it, I just want a fill. And then I can just drag out my boxes kind of as I want. Now I don't want them to be dark black like that because it makes it kind of hard to see. So I can actually come over to the color up here and I can change that to a tint by changing that to 10 and hitting the enter key and that will change it to a tint. So that just makes it a little easier for me to look at. Um, when I select this object, I just dropped that into the bar here. You can pull that in and out, and it will pop right in there. So when I select this object, I get the size right here. Now, it's really important when you're designing a wireframe for web that you keep your sizes reasonable sizes so that you can remember what they are, and you can make your images sensible sizes. So I'm going to switch this to 200. So 1,000 pixels by 200, and there it is. So I have that aligned up right there. Now I'm going to grab that box again just so my color setting stays the same. Grab my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw the next rectangle. And so let that kind of snap to the guidelines there. And as I'm dragging out, you can see that I actually get the sizes right there. And I can drag until that 600 pixels appears and then let go. So now I'm going to change the tint again. This time I'm going to make it 20% so I can see it as being a little different than this one. Um, if I want to just copy this object, so let's say I want a second object of this, all I have to do is click on the object hold down the option key and drag it and it will copy it. Of course I can also hit command C and command V to paste it but I find option dragging is a little faster and snap that to that one there. So I think these look a little big in comparison to what I have here so I'm coming back to my other one and I'm going to check the size here. 
So these are only 500 pixels in height. These ones are 600. So I can easily change that by just changing the number and changing the number here. So I'm going to change the color of this box as well so that it looks different from this one. Otherwise, we can't always tell where the border ends. So I'm going to change this one to 30%. And then I'm going to drag this one out, option drag, to copy it and place that below. So now I have alternating panels just so I can see where they're located. But you'll notice that something is missing at the top, and that's our navigation bar. So I'm going to hit Shift, and I'm going to click all of these to grab them at once and drag them down a little bit so I have some room for my menu bar. And I will create that once again with the rectangle tool. So I'm just going to drag that out kind of snapping right there. It looks like it's 1000 by 61. Let's make that 60 so it's not a weird size. I'm just going to click the arrow key so that happens. I'm zooming in using Command Plus to make sure that everything is kind of lined up there and it looks like it is. Uh, so it should be kind of neatly snapped. If not, you can kind of like feel it snap. Not really feel it, but you get a visual cue of it snapping together once you hit the borders of another object. So you can check those by just dragging those around. Finally, the last main box I need to create is the footer. And I've left this document at such a size so that if I just option drag this first box here and bring it to the bottom, I will then have a properly sized footer. So my footer is 200 pixels tall. Uh, all three of my content areas are 500 pixels tall and my menu bar is 60 pixels tall and then my header matches the footer at 200 pixels tall. So that's the first step. I'm going to change this tint here to 50 just so I can see it. Black's a little dark. And there we go. There's the first basic part of the wireframe. Now the next step is to draw some boxes on top of that wireframe so that we can actually get some content noted in here. Now I can put this like, for those of you familiar with Photoshop, I can put these on their own layer and then lock that layer if I want to, hit lock, and then create a new layer. And that way I can't drag and grab my boxes so they're not accidentally getting scooted around. You can do that. I didn't do that in the other document, but for this case I will just so that they're, they're in their space, they're where they are, and it's easy for me to change the content without changing the whole document. I'm going to save it by hitting Command S. And then I'm going to come back over here and I can just copy and paste these objects over if I want to. So I can hit Command C command V and paste this object and get it where I want it that way or I can recreate them so I will recreate them for the purpose of practicing with this assignment so I've created this box here for the first image um, I want to create another image down here so I'm just going to option drag that box down and I can change the size of it if I want so sometimes option dragging just makes it a little faster to create the objects I'm gonna come back here and check that so that's 300 by 400 pixels Let's make that one 300 by 400 pixels. Drag that over where I would like it. So there's that one. This one is 350 by 400. And then I have a gallery area here. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw out a kind of a basic sized gallery. So I look at this, it's kind of a weird size. Let's check this one. Oops. This one is 600 by 400. So let's make this one 600 by 400. And don't worry, you can come back and check these sizes later if you need to copy the exact size. But you can create your own sizes in yours as well. It won't really change the way I do the coding for the site, except for that in your CSS you may have to do some a little bit different math. But it's not too big of a deal if your sizes are a little different. So let's set this to 20, just so we can see it. There we go. Now I need to create some thumbnails for this object. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool hold down the shift key so that it stays a square and pull those open and I think I want to get those at about a hundred pixels so there we go then option drag option drag now let me show you something really useful you can do that's especially useful when you have web alignment type stuff you can use your alignment panel in InDesign to get things to line up and here's how you would do it so if I take this box and I bring it kind of down here and I take this box and I sort of line it up with that top edge, they kind of snap. You can kind of see it bloop, snap. I can get these to align evenly without me having to like noodle this around to get it right. So I'm going to highlight all three boxes. I'm going to go to window and I'm going to find my uh, alignment object and layout align panel. That's F7. Pull it up here. I'm just going to drop it in there. 
open it and I can use this align panel to get things to align. So I can tell them to align horizontal centers and they will now align their centers. Let me move this out of the way so you can see a little better. So I can align their centers that way. I can also distribute that, distribute their vertical centers and that will distribute them perfectly evenly within the selection. If you want to distribute them to, a, to the artboard, you can change what they distribute to. So if I say align to selection or align to margins or align to page, I can have them align to page. So if I hit align to page and then I hit center, they will center on the page. So this is probably one of the most useful tools in both Illustrator and InDesign is the align panel and then also the Pathfinder, which allows you to combine shapes together. But we don't need that for this purpose here. So I'm going to grab those. I'm going to set these to be 10% uh, as well so we can see them. And now I just have to add some text areas, and that'll be the last stage for this wireframe. So I'll grab the Type tool, and I'm going to draw a text box here. Once again, I want to make sure that my sizes are reasonable sizes, so I'm going to come back here to 450, 400, grab this one, make it 450, and it was already at 400, so there we go. Now, the thing about the text box is we can't see anything in it yet, and it's really helpful to fill it with placeholder text so that we know that's a text area, even if it's not the right text yet. So I'm going to right mouse click on it, and then I should be able to hit fill with placeholder text. It's just going to fill it with this sort of lorem ipsum placeholder text. It's not going to have, it's all nonsense text. But it gives me an idea when I look at the wireframe where my text is. Now I can easily just option drag this up here and then adjust the size as needed. I think the sizes are the same. Let's check. 425 by 400, so slightly different. But eh, I think I might leave it for, I'll keep them the same size. It just makes things a little easier. So I will do that. Let me scoot this over just a little bit. Try and decide kind of how I want that placed. Scoot that down. Use the align panel to get those to align. Let's align the top edges on those. Let me make sure it's aligned to selection. Align the top edges. So now I know those are perfectly aligned. So go back, use your align panel, get things. I can even group, group these objects by hitting Command G and then grab the box behind them and align to that. It's currently on a locked layer, but I can group them when I'm happy with where they're located, situate everything where I want. Finally, the last thing I'm going to do in this wireframe is add the text boxes for the menu section. And I'm going to have three different links here. So I'll create a new little text box. I'm not as worried about the size here for these because I'll have to adjust that when I actually get into the web portion. So I'll call this link one. It's very tiny. Let's make that bigger. Link one. I'm going to see if I can find <coughs> the paragraph panel up here. Center it. And then I will drag that out. Call this one link two. Let's zoom out a little bit. Drag another one. Oops. Grab it. Option drag. And call this one link three. Now, once again, I can easily use this alignment panel to get everything the way I want. So I'm going to align their center so they're centered. I'm going to distribute their horizontal center so that they're evenly spaced. And then I am going to group them, hit align to page, and hit center, and it will center them on the page. So that's a little much. You could obviously do that by hand, but that's a little technique. Just use the arrow keys to nudge that up. And now I have my basic wireframe ready to go. So that's stage one, creating the wireframe.